Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So what you see here is a reaction vessel, and it's big enough for me to fit inside. <laughs> now, this thing is designed to handle about 60 PSI of positive pressure, and I'm pretty sure it can handle a vacuum. So let's turn this thing into a vacuum chamber that I can also pressurize, which will be pretty cool, don't you think? So here's the data plate. You can see it was made by Leader Iron Works in 1961. Here's its rated pressure, 55 PSI at 650 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm assuming it was some sort of pressure cooker. I've looked online and uh, all I've seen is similar things that were called a reaction vessel. So uh, maybe chemical reactions were done inside this thing, but I'm not entirely sure what it was used for. If you know, feel free to let me uh, know in the comments. It is a bit rusty, as it is extremely old. You can see it's uh, got some rust flaking off here. And so I don't think I'm going to go to the full design pressure of the 60 PSI, even though you know it probably can handle it. Uh, just to be safe though, I don't think I'll ever put more than 30 PSI in it. Let's uh, set this thing up so that it can handle a vacuum. Uh, the first thing I've got to do is replace the gasket here. See, there's no gasket present. I'm thinking for now I'll just use like some silicone, get some real hard silicone to put in there. That ought to seal it just fine, at least for some testing. Okay, so here's the lid. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Maybe with a little bit stiffer stick. Okay, that's probably good enough. So there we go, the silicone has cured. I've put a plug in the bottom and a temporary plug right here on the side. And as you can see, I've installed some gauges. You can see this one is a pressure gauge, it goes up to 30 psi, and this one's a vacuum gauge, which will show negative 30 uh, inches of mercury. So let's hook the vacuum pump up to it and uh, see if this thing collapses. I sure hope it don't. <laughs> okay, here it goes. As you can see, I got a little vacuum pump hooked up to it. Let's pump it down and see what happens. I'm actually going to tighten this down just a little bit to help the seal form. And I can do that because of these bolts. And let's turn the pump on. Probably would help if I open the valve, huh? Oh, we got a vacuum. Excellent. The vacuum gauge is increasing, so I got it sealed. Let's just see what happens as we get down to a full vacuum. Could take a few minutes. Pump's already starting to heat up. I probably should have used the bigger one. I'm kind of afraid to get too close to this thing. Now we're just about 13 inches of mercury, so that's roughly Half of the atmosphere removed. Seems to be holding up so far. Just kind of watching this close to see if I can see any dents forming. Nothing's happening yet. You can see these are loose now. It's pushing down so tightly on it. I'm gonna have to turn this pump off and let it cool. Let's see how well it uh, holds the vacuum. I didn't see the gauge drop immediately, so that's a good sign. I'll give it a few minutes for the pump to cool and then I'll come back and start pumping again, assuming it didn't lose all its vacuum. Well, here we are about 10 minutes later and I can't tell any change. The camera might have picked up something. Let's actually pull this back so we can watch the thing collapse if it does. Well, we've been pumping for, I think, 12 minutes total. If I look at the gauge, 
darn near a full vacuum. So it held. Excellent. Shut this down. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, now is just the time to let the air back in. <laughs> What's crazy about this is I'm about to let in probably half a pound of air into the chamber. It is that big. I think it's about 50 gallons. But let's see what happens when I turn the valve on. <laughs> Camera moved. What is causing that? You know, I never thought it would take that long to repressurize a vacuum chamber. <laughs> of course, this is a small hole here. It's still not depressurized. It's crazy. Let's see if I can lift the lid now. It's, nope. <laughs> lid ain't coming off. There we go. That did it. Let's see how it fared. So it looks like the edge of this here cut into the seal here. Like it's actually pretty damaged. I don't know if that'll hold again. So I'm gonna have to figure something out to protect the seal. See, just shove the metal right into the silicone. I guess it makes sense because there was several tons of pressure pushing on it. It's still upsetting. So I ended up adding a piece of this uh, fiber reinforced hydraulic tubing along the lip here to uh, kind of hopefully spread out the force and also this is a much tougher rubber than the silicone is. In fact it was rather difficult to cut open. But now that it's on there I've added some silicone underneath of it so it should make a good seal and a good seat for that lid to sit on and hopefully the 10 tons of pressure doesn't cut through it again. I've also made a few other modifications that you might have seen in the background. First of all, I've added this here so I can plumb electricity and a webcam into there. I've got the uh, camera hooked up to my computer here. You can see the balloon moving around. The balloon is going to be the thing that we're going to be testing today. I also have a second camera down there. I could put any camera in there I like. I'll probably eventually move to a GoPro or something. And over there I got the little uh, pressure gauge. Hopefully that'll be in view of that camera. If you look in here, you can see that's acrylic. It's castable acrylic that I've sealed all these in. So there's the wires for the webcam. Here are the, here's the 110 volt AC connection. And uh, I got a couple of extra 14 gauge wires, which I can use for either a higher amperage uh, AC or just DC connections. So that's all sealed. Let's uh, put the lid back on, and also I've got the uh, bigger vacuum pump out here, so hopefully we can pump it down a little quicker. Okay, looks like we're ready. The camera's on, you can see the balloon. And I've tightened some of these down so that it'll make a seal. Let's turn on the pump. All right, air's coming out. And now I just wait. That's going up much faster than the other one did. You can actually see it move. Yeah, you can see the balloon's still getting bigger. We're down to roughly half an atmosphere. Yes. So, a balloon could go pretty high before bursting, especially if it wasn't filled very much to begin with. Oh, <laughs> there it goes. Man, that, that balloon would have went high. What is that? That was, man, that balloon would have went something like 30, you know, maybe even 50,000 feet. Easy. Okay, it doesn't feel like any more is coming out. It's been a few minutes. There we go. 25 inches of mercury. That's as much as it can pull because that's all the atmospheric pressure is at this altitude. So let's open this up. There you go, it drops a little bit because the gas is like going in here and pressurizing the gauge for the chamber. Look how long that's taken to go down. It's crazy. Yep. It's 
Still pulling air. I think we're approaching a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's been about a minute of just pulling air in and it still is not pressurized fully. And, huh, came off much more easily this time. Oh, look at all that condensation. <laughs> uh, let's get that camera out of there. You know, it looks like the silicone survived this time. It didn't hurt it. Also, this hose is also not hurt. <laughs> Excellent, it worked. This is reusable. I think I'd be amiss if I didn't uh, also try to do a pressure test on this chamber. I know it can hold pressure, but uh, let's uh, prove it in the video. So I'm going to pressurize it to about one and a half atmospheres. We're going to have a balloon in there again. And I think this time we're going to take the atmospheric pressure up so the balloon gets squished. And then we'll take it back to a vacuum until the balloon bursts. That'll give a pretty good dynamic range of pressures, don't you think? Anyway, I've cleaned this all up. I've got a I got my time-lapse camera in there this time. That way the file size is not quite so large. Okay, so I actually just pulled a slight vacuum. As you can see, I've got negative five inches of mercury. That's so I could get the uh, bolts tighter and make sure it was sealed. I've got that hooked up to an air compressor and my computer just went to screensaver, so yeah, everything's good. Let's start pressurizing it. Four pounds per square inch. All right. Now we got several tons of force pushing on the inside of this chamber. We just passed 12 pounds per square inch. That means the pressure inside the chamber is now twice what it is out here. Now I'm gonna let it go up a little bit farther. Turn this off. There we go. That is uh, 24 pounds per square inch. Excellent. And uh, down there I can see my balloon is rather small, but you guys will get to see the uh, time lapse video at the end of this, uh, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, there you go. It holds not only a vacuum, but also pressure. All right, let's release that pressure. <laughs> there you go. So I was watching this and the balloon, as it got really, really big and the pressure got really low, the balloon actually stopped floating. I guess that makes sense because now the balloon is under more pressure than the outside and so the, it's uh, no longer displacing enough air to counteract its own weight. Should burst any moment now. <laughs> ah, I was right. Yeah, it seems to burst at uh, about the equivalent of 50,000 feet. Cool. It looks like my camera is still in place, so I think we caught all that. And we're back under vacuum. There you go. Let's actually pull off these uh, uh, bolts now that uh, we're under a vacuum and the lid is being pushed on tighter than the bolts were forcing them. So there you go. Now I just got to release the pressure. Back into the chamber. And I'll take the lid off and recover my camera. So as you can see, I've got a dynamic range of several atmospheres worth of uh, pressure between uh, zero and about three atmospheres. So how about that? There's quite a lot of stuff I can do with this. Uh, some of the things I have planned are uh, cooking popcorn at different pressures inside of a microwave. Also, I really want to make bread and, uh, so, and I can put the whole bread maker inside of here. So excellent. Anyway. Hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you next time.